Good morning. Welcome to Law Across the Sea. My name is Mark Shklov, and I am the host of Law Across the Sea, and we present programs about, about lawyers, strange as that sounds, and many lawyers who have practices that take them across the sea. Uh, and, and law is not, not just about books, uh, not just about court cases. Uh, law is multifaceted. Law is just like life. There's lots of things that we can learn in life and law that will help us out in dealing with people. And today our program is called The Secret, Secret of Ping Pong Diplomacy. Secrets of Ping Pong Diplomacy. That may sound like a strange title, but I think by the end of the program you'll understand. Uh, my guest is Bruce Zhang. He is a lawyer from Suzhou uh, in China. Uh, he has an extensive background in sports. And after his graduation from Beijing Sports University, he decided that he wanted to become a lawyer. Right, Bruce? Yeah. So w welcome. Welcome to our programs. Thank you. That's my, that's my pleasure. Good to have you here. Um, now, we, this title, P The Secrets of Ping Pong Diplomacy. Now, you and I have talked a little bit about this, and we've had so, some fun talking about this. OK. What, what, is, what, what, what are we talking about? What are the secrets of ping pong diplomacy? Secret of ping pong promise, actually, it was uh, 19, 1971. Actually, it was a very special period for Chinese people. At that time, Chinese national ping pong team went to Japan to attend the World Championships competition. And in Tokyo, they met American ping pong players. And actually, they got a very good relationship with each other. Uh, American ping pong, ping pong players applied to China. They want to, want, wanted to visit China. No, but, I, but just let me interrupt for a minute. At this time, the relationship between China and the United States was not as cordial no, or as friendly no, as, no, as it was. No, not, okay. not at all. At that time, actually, China didn't open the door to the United States. And, but it, it was a very surprise. So they applied to visit China, and it's approved. It's approved by Chairman Mao. Actually, Chairman Mao noticed that. And, uh, and where come the American, American uh, ping pong players to visit China? So after a couple months, they went to China, had a visit. Actually, it was the first time for American delegation to visit China. So at that time, I think China opens the door to the United States. And, and it had to do with uh, sport. Yeah, sport. They, they, played, they played ping pong together and show the, you know, the professional technique. And uh, actually, after, after one year, the President uh, Nixon, the American president, visited Beijing. And that uh, was a big thing. Yeah, that's a, that's, that is a, that's a very huge event. And uh, uh, also Chinese ping pong players went to United States, have a visit. So in, in those days, I, I remember those days, and the uh, atmosphere before the ping pong diplomacy mm -hmm. was that uh, we we were almost f fighting each other, China and U.S. We were, you know, not yeah. not 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 friends. Yeah, it's a it's a historic reason. So a and and so this 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 interesting game of ping pong allowed a friendships to be made amongst players, which kind of opened the doors to both countries. Yes, it's just like, you know, a Chinese say, old saying. We always say, friends first, competition second, and especially for the professional players. When they attended the, the world, com uh, world competitions, they, the first purpose, to make friends, not to you know, achieve the, the gold medals. And uh, they did, they did. At that time, they made a lot of friends from uh, all over the world. And at, at that time, no one expected Nixon, uh, the no. American pr president, no. to, go, to go to China. No, it, it was a very big surprise also. And, and, and okay, so, so 
that is kind of the open the door diplomacy mm -hmm. that ping pong yeah play but tell me you know we, about sports in general in, in in china and 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 how important they are to relationships and you mentioned friends first yeah and and, and explain how that how that works with uh, developing relationships in, 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 with China. Okay, ping, actually for sports are very important for Chinese people. I think it's very, also very important for people all over the world. And when we get a relationship with uh, other countries in sports area, we always send a very, very good uh, coaches to other countries. For example, ping pong coaches, badminton coaches, we send a lot of coaches to other countries to improve their, their professional techniques. And uh, I believe when people, when people have a very good relationship, countries will have very good relationships. And, and, and so it's, it, it's beyond just playing a game. Yeah, it, it I is, think so. It is kind of a... Uh, a um, underlying way to make friends that's not out there uh, as active diplomacy, if you will, but it, it's kind of uh, under, underneath where you learn to be a friend through the sports. Mm -hmm. And then what follows is maybe uh, development, uh, yeah, e yeah. the if economy, or right. more relationships that are, are not necessarily sports, but they help develop the economy, they help develop the country. Yeah, from, I think from individual uh, friendship to business friendship, also to diplomacy friendship, it's, a, it's a like a take steps, step by step. And in the step by step process, uh, China progressed in a way also. Mm -hmm. uh, from that first ping pong visit, yeah, and uh, seemed to open its doors more and more, mm -hmm. and that also helped with the development of law, right, yes. in in China. How yeah. did, how how did that pr progress? Uh, you know, when we have uh, activities with uh, with people from uh, from other countries, I think that law is uh, is very important because we every country has a different law, so we in. In every country, we should follow the different laws, and when we, you know, get 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 the relationship more and more, so law definitely will be involved. But the sports is the common mm -hmm. factor. The sports is the thing that brings everybody together. Mm -hmm. Just like the ping pong <coughs> ping pong diplomacy, mm -hmm. the sports. Uh, gives you something that everybody can talk about, mm -hmm. right? I mean, mm -hmm. when you, you, you've traveled a lot in the yeah. United States and yeah. you've seen various types of mm -hmm. uh, sports activities yes. and you've met a lot of lawyers. Yes. And do you, do you have the occasion when you do that to talk about the different sports or the, in China and in the United States? Yeah, we uh, talk a lot, especially the ba <laughs> basketball and the soccer. <laughs> okay. You know, we have a very famous uh, basketball player, Yao Ming. Yeah, he was a... Uh, he, he, he uh, was a successful basketball player in the United States. He was, I think he was drafted uh, in 2002 as a number one player by NBA. And he had a very successful career in the United States. And by, by the way, today is his birthday. Today is his birthday? He, today is his birthday. Oh, I, heard, oh. I heard it on the news as I was coming oh. to work. Okay. Oh, actually, he, a couple of days ago, Ago, he became the, a member of uh, Hall of F Basketball for of him, fame. It's a very yeah, it's a very great honor for him. And he's very young. Yeah, very young. Yeah. Very young. Just uh, just uh, uh, 30, 34 or thirty three. Well, what is he doing now? What, what is his what is his p position in China? He no, he is kind of a businessman. He he is a boss of uh, a CBA basketball. Club. China Basketball, Basketball Association, Association. Okay. right, and uh, it's, uh, uh, this, this club is located in Shanghai, and uh, he's, he is a Shanghainese, so oh, he's, he's a boss of the club, and also he invest, invested in lots of companies, and also by some uh, stock, stock market. 
So he has, he, through sports, he has done many, many things. Yes. And, 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 and I'm sure he has lots of lawyers that work for him, right? Uh -huh. Definitely, definitely. She, uh, he has a very good re reputation in China, so uh, it's easier for him to de develop his uh, business in China. And also, he has a team, including some lawyers, to you know to deal with some uh, legal issues. Okay. Now, the, just c curious, does he uh, have his own uh, private company, or does he? Uh, um, use law firms, or, or and does he have in-house lawyers? Do, uh, do you know? I think he has uh, his own companies, not just not only one. I think several, and uh, he also he is a shareholder of uh, some uh, listed companies, and he has a, a team called uh, Yao Team, and including some uh, attorneys. And that's like an economic development right, team. Right. For just him, a, just work for him. I see. I see. It's a kind and of also, private... also also including some American attorneys. Really? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Wow. So he's been very very successful, and it's meaningful in China. Very successful for for uh, uh, somebody like that who made it in the United States. Right. Uh, and uh, you know, our, our, I guess sports seem to be important in yeah. China. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Actually, he's, he achieved the reputation in the United States and affect the Chinese people. And sports are very important for Chinese people. Is there, like, when the Chinese children are growing up, are they required to take sports in school? Or are they... Yeah, yeah it is required uh, from uh, one grade. One grade. For, first grade. First yeah, grade. first grade, yeah. And, and is it just general sports or all types of sports? Uh, general sport, including general sports, also including some uh, basketball and uh, soccer. You can choose. Okay. Now, and, and is this a new new requirements or has this been Chinese culture for a long time? Or, uh, or with, with respect to, to sports, and, you know, has, has it always been important or is it something that's relatively new? I, I think it was a requi required of long long ago and it's uh, like a traditional because we also have very uh, lots of uh, traditional chinese sports like what like what? like uh, like martial arts okay tai chi something like that and okay. also dancing chinese dancing very traditional and uh, most of chinese people uh, have a, a habit to practice the one kind of sports okay now one one thing you 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 mentioned is that uh, Mao Zedong mm -hmm. was supportive of ping pong diplomacy. Yeah. Did he have a philosophy about sports also? Did he have a feeling uh, uh, or about I that? I think he, he was uh, very good at swimming. Yeah, he used to swim across the Yangtze River. It's, uh, it's the biggest river in China. It's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's the third biggest river all over the world. Actually, it's very hard to cross the river. Because but, of the current. Yeah, I, yeah. But, but he did, and for several times. When he was quite old, more than, more than 70 years old. So actually, he encouraged all Chinese people to do, to do sports, to improve, make your body strong. Yeah. OK. Well, let's, we're going to take a short break now. OK. And then we'll come back and talk a, a little bit more about sports and how it affects China and the law. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right. Welcome to thinktechhawaii.com. This is Johnson Choi, your host. My focus is Asia in Reveal. We talk about interesting subjects in Asia. Be sure to check the thinktech.com website on the next topic. Thank you. Hello, I'm Crystal from Quok Talk. I've got a new show here. You've got to tune in, check out my topics on sensitive, provocative female issues. So Tuesday mornings, 10 o'clock. Don't miss it. It's going to be fun and dangerous. Hi, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for Ehana Kako. Let's work together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on Ehana Kako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. 
We are back uh, with Law Across the Sea with Bruce Jean, and uh, we're talking not strictly about law today. We're talking about how sports affects life and law. And Bruce Jean is our guest, and Bruce is a lawyer from Suzhou, yeah. China, and is a graduate of Beijing Sports University. And uh, it, it, first of all, Bruce, what is Beijing Sports University? What is that about? Beijing Sports University is the best sports university in China. And uh, it's located in Beijing. And also, it, lots of students from the, from the sport, uh, Beijing Sports University attended the Olympic Games. And some of them achieved the, the medals of the Olympic Games. And you were always interested in sports, and that's what directed you first to sports yeah, study? When I, yeah, when I, actually when I was uh, eight, years, eight years old, I started to practice martial arts. And uh, I, I practiced for a long time until I, uh, until I graduated from, from the university. Uh, I've, I was very interested in sports. And then you decided to go to law. Yeah. Actually, when I graduated from the United uh, from the university, I I thought I should be not only physical strong but also mentally strong. So I need both. So I decided to choose the law to as my major to study again. And eventually became a lawyer. Yeah. And, uh, and now you combine your love of of sports and law yeah. at times. Right. Right. Actually, I think sports. I have a sports uh, background. It, it is very helpful for me to be a lawyer. How's that? Because we, we have physical strength. We can keep, keep starting all the time. And uh, also we have uh, very, as a, as a player, we have very good communication skills, social skills with other players. So it's helpful for me to, uh, to start my career as a lawyer. And, and also, uh, I would think with clients and mm -hmm. with other lawyers, uh, even American lawyers or foreign lawyers to China, mm -hmm. that sports connection would be helpful. Yeah, very helpful. When I uh, went to the mainland of the United States, I always go to East Coast and the West Coast. And uh, we talk to the sports all the time, especially the American football, American <laughs> basketball, American baseball. So that's, so that's, uh, so that's very popular in the United States. Do you have uh, any American teams that you like? Uh, football teams or basketball teams? Anything uh, that, uh, that are your favorites? Uh, I think a bas basketball team is uh, uh, Lakers, Los Angeles Lakers, because uh, the very famous player, right. Kobe Bryant. Right, right, and right, also right, right. Uh, football, a football, a football club is a... Uh, is, uh, Green Pack, Green Green Pack Bay. Green, Green Bay Packers. Yeah, Green right? Bay Pack. Yeah. It, it's a, uh, it's just like from a small town, but uh, really powerful. It encourages everyone to you know achieve success. Oh, good, good. Yeah, I like. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like them too, as you know. Okay. Um, you know, you know, you 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 mentioned that some of your friends in uh, the sports university mm -hmm. at Beijing went on to the Olympics. Yeah. Now. It, uh, are the Olympics important to China? And I know they are, but I'm trying to understand why. why. Why are the Olympics so important? I think Olympic is very important for Chinese people. Because Olympic game just like a, a huge stage for, for the world. When you have a very, very good performance in Olympic, it means you show your power to all of the world. Also, you show your friend, for friendship to, your, to the world. And uh, you know, as a, as a historic reason, Chinese people really want to show show ourselves to all the world, let all world to know Chinese people. So that's the reason why it's very important. And it kind of follows up on what you were saying about uh, the secrets of ping pong diplomacy. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it sports is a way to communicate uh, that is not so outwardly. Uh, political, mm -hmm. uh, and it helps you make friends. Yeah, and it shows who you are. Yes, and and um, you know, with respect to the Olympics, so it, we're just 
com completed. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the Chinese reaction to to those Olympics? How how did China do? Or what and 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 what, what what was the feeling in China about about those Olympics? If uh, if uh, Chinese players uh, athletes can get a very good uh, performance in Olympic, Chinese people will be happy, very happy. But if uh, bad performance, they will be upset. So actually, it's very very important for the individuals. How, how does it work in China if you are successful in the Olympics? Uh, if, uh, for example, if uh, an athlete achieves a very good performance, for example, get the, get the medals from, uh, uh, from the Olympic Games, they will get the bonus from uh, government. Monetary, from m money. Yeah, money. money. And also they can get money from the sponsors. I see. But sometimes they can get some properties. Real estate. Yeah, real estate. And, and I mean, I, I guess in the United States, if, if you're successful, you get uh, advertisement uh, mm. contracts. Uh, do, do attorneys take part in negotiations to, for, for these athletes in yeah, China? Yeah, I, I, I think the attorneys involved in uh, those activities. Because when athletes size a contract to, with, uh, with the sponsors, they need a professional lawyers to, you know, to, uh, dra to draft the contract. And, and um, you know, in the United States, we have agents. In, mm -hmm. in other words, people that uh, represent athletes. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they're attorneys, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they're not. Have, uh, do they have the same thing in China? Uh, I think it's a similar. It's similar. For very famous athletes, they also have an agent. Uh, agent also a licensed agent. And uh, some Sometimes they have, uh, law, they have a law background, uh, especially, when, uh, especially when they want to you know, uh, play in overseas. For example, Yao Ming. Yao Ming has an American attorney. American attorney him. to help him. Uh, and, and do American attorneys or agents, do they go to China to look for uh, prospects? Uh, for I think so. Okay. I think so. In, in China, uh, what type of sports, uh, you, you mentioned martial arts, basketball, uh, what, what are the most popular sports in China? I think currently the most uh, popular sport is uh, soccer. Because mm -hmm. soccer is, uh, it is the most uh, popular all over the world. So, and also... Except in the United States. Oh, except in the United States. United States well, it's popular, football. but... <laughs> I'm sorry, but not, not, not as popular as, as, as football. Yeah, I noticed. I noticed. But, uh, but uh, it really, really, really popular in China. Soccer. And again, that goes along with the secrets of ping pong diplomacy. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you said soccer is most popular all around the world, there's another connection there mm -hmm. uh, for Chinese mm -hmm. all around the world. And is, is the government supportive in China of, of soccer uh, uh, to develop those relationships? Because it seems to me that follows from ping pong. Uh, from, this, from the ping pong diplomacy, you can have soccer diplomacy. Yeah, I, I think for two different countries, we, ha we use different uh, ways. For United States, we have, a, we have ping pong diplomacy. But uh, for other countries, maybe the badminton or, or sports or, or other sports or uh, basketball. Yeah, for example, in Asian countries, we always send the badminton coaches to other countries to make a relationship between two, two nations. Okay, and, and are there um, any f potential of things like American f football in China? Is that at all out there, or do, do they ever play it? I mean, uh, do, do kids ever play it, or do they... Do they know about it, or is it not, not, that, not that popular? Yeah, I, I think American football is not, a, not so popular in China. I think the reason is uh, Chinese parents uh, think it's very aggressive. Mm -hmm. It's easier to get injured in American football. So okay. they're afraid of to attend the, the American football. So that's the reason. Okay. But actually, it's safe. In my opinion, it's safe. Well, I, I guess uh, I understand. I understand in, in China, culturally too, I think parents 
want to protect their children. Yeah. And there's a, there is a very family-oriented culture mm -hmm. in China that I've seen. Yes. And so I can understand that. Of course, Americans are the same, mm -hmm. but we do like our football. You know, we do like do right. like the football, and, yeah. and so there there is a cultural difference there. There is there is something there. I, I think it's a it's a different culture. American kids, American parents want want their kids to be you know, more brave, but Chinese parents want their kids to be more careful. So that's a different. Okay. That's a different. So for Chinese kids, they, they always choose ping pong. Badminton because it's uh, not aggressive. You you play individual, but uh, in United States they always choose foot American football, baseball, and uh, uh, basketball. More teamwork. Okay, but uh, you've also told me that Chinese like basketball, mm -hmm. and we've seen that. Yeah. Yao Ming. I yeah. Mean, wow, seven foot six inches. Yeah, yeah, seven six. Uh, are there other Chinese basketball players that are going to be uh, in the future coming to the United States? But actually, uh, currently, uh, one of a uh, basketball player named uh, Yi Jianlian, he signed a contract with the Lakers. What, what was his name? Yi Jianlian. Yi Jianlian. Right. Okay, he signed with the Sa Lakers. Yeah, with the Lakers. Uh, it's about uh, $8 million contract. It's a, it's a big contract. Yeah. yeah. When, when will he start? Uh, he actually... Uh, he were this season. He will start this season. I, I think after September. Okay. And in China, there are uh, professional teams also. Yeah. Professional yeah, sports we, teams. Yeah, we have uh, CBA, China, uh, China Basketball Association. And soccer. Are yeah, they soccer. are they pro professional? Professional. Okay. And they and they all employ attorneys. Uh, I, I, would assume. I think so. In in every club, they have. They have uh, several attorneys to deal with some, uh, yeah, some uh, legal issues. Okay. And do they ever travel outside of China? Do they ever come to yeah. the United States? Uh, I think not, not a lot in the United States, but uh, they travel to uh, Asian Europe a lot. And again, part of the same type of, uh, of diplomacy, mm -hmm. I, I, I suspect. Mm -hmm. It's out there to make friends uh, and uh, to learn to get along with one another. And you send the sports teams. Seems like a good strategy. Do, yeah. do American teams come to China? Yeah, always. Uh, the popular is uh, basketball player. They have a uh, summer break, and uh, in summer break, uh, usually they they will go to the United States. Uh, of course, one reason is for the sponsors. They want to help sponsors to to do advertisement, and another yeah, another mean is. It is popular in China, so effective Chinese people, especially Chinese kids. So, in other words, it goes both ways. The ping pong diplomacy has China mm -hmm. and United States both thinking along the same way. Right. We're going to use sports to help develop relationships, yeah. friendships, mm -hmm. and guess what? We get lawyers involved along the way also, which is something good. Yeah. Now, before we're going to close right now, but mm -hmm. before we do, uh, would you mind showing me, I know you're a Tai Chi expert. Yeah, I'll, I, I, yeah I practice I, for a long I, time. I don't want to put you on the spot, but okay. could you show me? Okay, I just to, uh, sit here, show you. Sit, sit there and, and show me a, a Tai Chi. Okay. <sighs> Something like that. Thank it's you. a very slow movement, but it's actually it's powerful. Thank you very much, Bruce. My pleasure. I enjoyed our talk today. Me too.